Horse With No Name by America. This is from their debut album released in 1972. And it was the first single they ever released as a band. And it was their biggest selling single of their entire career. And, you know, this song is such a classic. And it's such a staple in our culture. It's, um, you know, I don't think you could find anybody pretty well on the planet that hasn't heard this song. And there's a reason for that, you know, it's just a really unique and interesting song. It goes down in history as a classic two chord song. You know, there's, oh yeah, horse with no name, that's easy, there's only two chords. But in actual fact, if you combine uh, Dewey Bunnell's part, which is in an alternate tuning, which I'll get into in a second, and Jerry Beckley's part, which is in standard tuning, between the two of them, they actually play nine chords. Now, two of those chords are the same chord, just with different voicings. But, you know, the fingerings and all in all, it's there's nine chords in this song. <laughs> and you might not believe me, but as we go along, I'll show you all those chords. It surprised me, because I never realized that. Anyways, let's get into it. We're going to start with Dewey Bunnell's part. He's the guy who wrote it, and he plays the intro, you know, and his guitar is in an alternate tuning, so it's... I'll put the tuning down there, like I always do. Low E string is tuned down to D. A string is tuned down to E. And then D, G, B stay the same. And the high E is tuned down to D. All right? And he plays three different fingerings in the verses and the chorus. And then he plays three different chords in the solo, like underneath the solo. So the first fingering is that. It's E2, D2, and high E string, second fret. So it's your first chord. Your next chord is he just moves the second and third fingers over a string. So A2, G2. All right, and we kind of mute that, that um, the low E string, the low E string. So first chord, second chord. And most people, that's all they'll play. Right? But there's a third chord in there. And after the second chord, all you do is you lift up your first finger. And that's your third chord. This first one is an E minor. The second one is a D6-9 over F sharp. And this third one is an E sus4. All right, now let's get into the strumming. The strumming is really crucial to get the sound on this. So it's kind of like. Like that. So we've got a down, down, up, right? And then the next down, we're going to kind of mute the low strings. Like that, but try and keep the high strings ringing. So da 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 slash da da da. And then we go to the second chord. So the second chord is. And even though, you know, he takes his finger off that A2, what you're hearing there mostly is that D string. really listen to that track you can hear that but of course he is playing the A string too but it, you know it's tuned down so low that the D string definitely pops out so really slow that's the first pattern he plays now he doesn't play that through the whole song he plays another pattern, and that's like this. Same chords, just a different strum. So we're sort of pushing on the offbeats on this one, right? After that slash, we're going to go straight into up shots, off shots. Of course, the question is, when do those patterns come in? And you know what? It's really just whenever you feel like doing it. Because <laughs> I guarantee you when they recorded this, he didn't have any set patterns 
for when those two different parts come in. You know, he's just instinctively playing. So in my demo, I tried to copy like the beginning of the actual song. So I think I did two of the first pattern, one of the second pattern, and then back to the first pattern. And then you can just play it however you want as you go along. Now, let's get into what he plays underneath the solo. So, that sort of sequence ends like this. And then the solo starts, right? And under the solo, he's going to go... original verse chorus pattern okay so what we're doing there is we're just gonna we're gonna not play the low E and we're gonna fret D2 all right that's it you can use your middle finger or whatever finger you want I'd like to use my, my, my first finger and now we've got that open E string which is actually a D so that chord now is an E minor 7 okay so that's if you're counting that's the fourth chord and the rhythm is bounce off off right He's going to go to this chord, which is just a bar on the second fret from the D string down, and you know, that is an A over E. Okay, so that's the sixth chord. So. And now we're going to hit this chord, which, you know, all of these chords, we're not playing the low E, just keep that in mind. We're playing D5 and B7. Beautiful. And that's an E minor 9. And so that's the sixth chord of this part. All right, so I'll try and show you the rhythm. Up, down, right? So that's the first time through. The second time through is a little different. So it sort of just fills it in a bit. Again, it, it's more of a feel thing. So let's play both of those sections together. Coming out of this. Solo, right? That is Dewey Bunnell's part. That's the entire thing. So now what I'm going to do is I will change my tuning to standard tuning and show you the other part, which is Jerry Beckley's. All right, so I'm now in standard tuning, and this is Jerry Beckley's part. So his part is going to start on this chord here. And you play all six strings, you're standard tuning them, right? So that is like, that would be an E minor 7. But when we also fret E2, high E string, that's now E minor 9, okay, and he fingers it differently, he fingers it like that, and I just can't get with that, because I think it's uh, really awkward, you'll see as we go along why that's so, okay, so that's E minor 9, and then his next chord will be this, which is F sharp minor 11, over the fifth, C sharp. Because we're not we're not playing that F sharp note. I mean, if you can get your thumb around there and still get those high high E and B strings to sound, then go for it. But you know what I just do it like that and I kind of mute out the E string with my middle finger. So we've got this. And then the next chord is that, which is an E7 sus4. So we've got minor 9, sharp minor 11, sus 
seven says four. Okay. And you know, if you do it like he does it, you've got that, and then you've got this, and then there. And so then, you know, you to do it his way, you've got to now do that, which is quite a, you know, that's quite a bit of movement. Whereas if you do it my way, you just do that. You just leave that finger there, take your third finger, put it on the E string, and get your, your little finger on the B. All right, so now the rhythm for his part, it starts out with a, just a back strum, arpeggio. And that is all he does through the, the entire song. So that's his part. And, you know, we're keeping track of chords here. So um, Dewey bundles with six chords. Now the first chord that Jerry plays is this E minor 9. And Dewey plays an E minor 9. It's the last chord of the solo. I can't do it because it's in a different tuning, right? If you look back in the video, the E minor 9 is the last chord, the third chord under the solo. Okay, so, but now Jerry Beckley is playing E minor 9, the first chord of the progression. So it's the same chord, different voicing. So I'm going to say that's the seventh chord. And then the second chord, F, minor, F sharp minor 11, would be the eighth chord. And this E7 sus4, again, Dewey Bunnell plays that as the third chord over the verse and chorus. So it's the same chord, just a, a slightly different voice. So that would be the ninth chord. So, you know, without the two chords that have different voices, you've got seven chords in this song. But if you include those two, you've got nine. So that's it for his part. Now we're going to go into the lead. And I should have mentioned before, for this rhythm stuff, I use this. I'm going to try and zoom that in there. Oh, man, these cameras, I don't know. Whatever. It's uh, it's a Dunlop Tortex, and it's 73 millimeters yellow. You know, it's nice and bendy, and it can give you a really nice... really nice light kind of uh, airy sort of touch when you're playing rhythms um, but for the solo <laughs> I should have got this out earlier okay I'm just grabbing for this pick um, I use this one this is uh, another Dunlop Tortex it's my favorite picks it's the one with a, with a little sharp point right this one's kind of worn down a bit and it's what is this it's one millimeter okay so let's do the solo so there's the main solo part, and then there's the two harmonies, so I'll go over both of those. And this, you know, to get this, you might want to look at getting the tab. Um, anyway, so we're going to start like this, so... Right, that's the chord before the solo, and then we're going to go... Alright, that's the first lick, so the entire thing is played on the E string, except for a couple of notes at the end. Okay, so we've got, we're hammering that on to the second fret, and sliding up to the third fret, sliding up to the fifth fret, back down to the second fret, back up to the third fret, and then pulling off open. Okay, so that's two, three, five, and seven, and then five, seven. So that whole bit so far. Okay, that's just great. I just love this solo. And then he's just going to go up in the 12th fret. He's just going to do that. And that carries on underneath. Uh, the harmony part, the descending, cascading harmony part. So that's all there is to the main lead. So now let's do the cascading part. There's two parts. The main part is here. It starts on the 10th fret. I'll just play it one time. Oh, 
like I say, it's all in the E string except the last few notes. We're going to slide that first one on a downstroke. And then we're going to do alternate picking for the rest of it. All right, so we've got 10, 9, 7, 5, 3, 2, open. do that really slow. That last bit, it's the third and second fret of the B string and then open. And I like to try and leave that E string ringing. That's not so bad at that speed, but up to speed, the speed of the song, it's a lot trickier. I mean, that took some practice for me to get because alternate picking is really not my thing, you know. I'm more of a hammer-on pull-off player. So that's the first part. Now the harmony part, we're going to go up a third, and we're going to start on the 14th fret, sliding down to 12. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. Ending on the high E string. 14, 12, 10... Nine, seven, five, three, two. And just hit the B string on the third fret once and end on the high E. So slowly. And you know, when you put those both together with that underneath it, it just sounds magical, you know, it's just such a great part. So that up to speed then would be... Anyways, that's it for this one. That's all the parts, all seven or nine chords, depending on how you look at it, and the main solo and the two harmonies. I have to say, I just loved working on this song because it's always been uh, one of my favorite songs of all time. I mean, how can you how can you resist this song? You know, it's just so awesome. It creates such a strong mood, and um, you know the bass playing in it, and it's actually Ray Cooper playing percussion, uh, who is just one of the world's greatest percussion players. And then, you know, I'm just talking about the guitar parts, but then you add in the, the beautiful harmonies and the chorus and everything. Uh, just a gorgeous song. Just love it. Anyways. I hope you get something out of this lesson. I hope it helps you to learn the song, and I'll talk to you next time.